and feel free to respond to whatever I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, my heart is just so full and I'm just stumbling over myself because it's full of emotion at this point in time. So let me just say one small good evening, everyone, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, pastors, leaders, elders, fellow soldiers. And you know, when you come to an Archivist Awakening event, all of us are archivists. We drop all our titles. We are not bothered about our offices. We are just brothers and sisters, fellow soldiers, archivists. And it's just great that um, I'm, you're, you're, you're spending this time uh, with all of us. Let me just start by saying a few words of thanks. And first and foremost, of course, we give praise and thanks to our God. To God be all the glory. It's entirely, entirely by His grace. Tonight, I keep telling team keepers, I know you're doing your best. I know you want to put up a good um, night for everyone. But remember, it is all about Jesus and His kingdom. And I'm so excited that Pastor Amos came on and shared with us about the kingdom. So thank you, Pastor Amos, for bringing the word, for reminding us that it is all about the kingdom of God. Our keepers awakening about kingdom assignments, it's always about the kingdom of God. So thank you, Pastor Amos, for being with us and also encouraging us. I want to say thank you also to Pastor Rodden, who later on will be uh, saying a word of prayer for the ministry. But not just Pastor Rodden, he represents my spiritual family at FGA, Full Gospel Assembly. And I'm also very thankful that they are so supportive. They're always blessing me, uh, allowing me to do what I need to do. And I know that they are squarely praying for me and cheering me on. Um, I must say thank you to Elaine and the team who has put together uh, everything tonight. And if you agree with me that you've been having a great time and you've, you've done a great job, will you just put a, a, a response there, you know, put a clap, put a thumbs up and just thank Team Archipus for me. It's not just Elaine and her team, but all across uh, Archipus Awakening, all of Team Archipus, and especially those who have journeyed with me from day one. You only heard from Anna and Siu Hun. There are many more who have stood by me and stood with me, some up in the foreground and others in the background, but they have been cheering me on all these years. And as also to say thank you to all the others who have come on board along the way. It's been a crazy adventure. And I want to say thank you for being crazy with me. Okay. I want to say thank you to my parents, my dad and mom. In case you're not aware, they are here on this Zoom call. And they have been quietly supporting me also and allowing me to do what I need to do. Thanks to you, Dad, and thanks, Mom, always for cheering me on and standing with me, um, however challenging it might be. And last but definitely not least, I want to say thank you to my wife, Serene, and our seven children. Uh, really, these are the ones who have sacrificed so much that I get to get out there and do what I need to do, and they will have to forego that time uh, with Daddy. Uh, I know I... <laughs> uh, neglect a little bit here and there, but I'm so thankful for their sacrifice as well as their understanding. So all praise to the Lord. Tonight is a time to say thank you to everyone and thank you to the Lord. Our Keepers Awakening, seven, year, seven years ago, formally we started um, the 3rd of August. But if you are aware of the history of Archipus Awakening, the start was nine months before that. And the Lord just gave one word. And as simply as, as what it is, Archipus Awakening, the Lord has always been just guiding us. Uh, and the first word was awakening. But from the first one word, it became one verse. And he gives Colossians 4.17, from which we find out one name called Archipus. And today we have one message. And this one message is against the backdrop of the end times. It's an 11th hour sounding of the call to wake up. You know, don't sleep anymore. You've got to know what God has asked you to do so that you can know and fulfill your kingdom assignments. On this slide that you see, 
is the summary of what Archippus Awakening is. Look at this quadrant on the alarm clock. It's a reminder for us that this arc is a, the last quadrant, that it is the final hours. And I think especially in this season, we are being reminded over and over again. This is how the Lord has been leading Archippus all the way. It's always been like that. One word at the time. And you know, when God says to us, he doesn't need many words. One word can turn you upside down, right? One word can direct you. One word can set you on the right track. It's always been one step at a time. I don't know what the next instruction is. And for myself personally, it's also been one day at a time. And I want to say to all of you out there, our keepers, you know, it's always one instruction, amen? Always one assignment at a time. We want a whole picture painted for us, but the Lord will always give us that one word. Now, after seven years, this is like an overview of what Archippus Awakening is. You saw in that five-minute video, the different streams. This is what it is. Archippus Awakening has gone a little bit deeper. We have moved a little bit wider. And look at this banner right on top. We call it the KPI. It's a Kingdom Prayer Initiative. And everything is covered by prayer. We are always praying. And there are different streams that are praying. The young adults are praying. Um, the, the overseas are praying. You know, um, Our groups are praying. Our core teams are praying. Our core uh, team in MAP, is all, they'll also be praying. So prayer is the main covering. But we are firmly grounded with Kingdom Foundation at the bottom. So you see Kingdom 101 as an offering. Um, a study through the book of Matthew, which is a kingdom manual to me. And we've started that since 2015. In 2015, we launched Say to Our Keepers. And in 2018, Alignment Check. These are the books uh, with, with, which continue to be a resource to anyone who wants to be awakened, aligned, and assigned. In 2017, we have our very, very first mentoring aligning process. And we call it MAP. But along the seven years, we have conducted awakening events, countless, numerous seminars to bring the message of awakening. And then to bring the message of alignment is AWE. And after that, we share kingdom stories. Why? Because our three words will always be there. Awaken, aligned, assign. And we call this the Archipian strategic process. But for, we have developed it a little bit deeper now. Um, that we must be reminded always of the awakening context so that we can then move with the alignment check. And my prayer, my vision today is that we can help the church and the body of Christ create an assignment culture. And so if you look at this slide, look at that, the, the different initiatives, and I just counted, and coincidentally, it happens to be seven initiatives, okay? Across this seven years, you just count, Kingdom KPI, Awakening Events, Alignment Check, Weekends, and uh, Our Keeping Stories, Kingdom 101, Our Books, and Map. Seven initiatives across the seven years, and the Lord is not done with us yet. One word, is all we need from the Lord. And how he has led Archippus Awakening has always been, every year he would drop a word in my heart to give me the focus for that year. So the first four years, the first year he said, so yeah, that's what you're gonna do. Psalm one, two, six, verse five, you're gonna sow in tears, get ready for some crying, you know, get ready for some tough sowing. It's gonna be difficult, but you will reap in joy. The second year, I said, thank you, Lord. In Isaiah 30, 23, it says, I will give you rain for the rain, for the seed that you are sowing. I said, thank you, Lord. If I sow, there's no rain. Nothing is going to happen. He says, I will give you rain. And, and in the second year, we started to see things happen. In the third year, in number 17, verse 8, I was led to that passage about uh, Aaron's rod that was put into the Ark of the Covenant. And when they opened it up, that rod budded. And the Lord was saying to me that you are going to begin to see buds, you know, from the sowing, because of the rain, the buds are going to be forming. And those buds were almond buds. Now, Archippus, you understand what the significance of almond is. Then you understand what the Lord was really saying. In the fourth year, it was from Leviticus chapter 19, verses 23 to 24, uh, verses 23 to 24. And it says that the first three years, you don't eat of the fruit. But in the fourth year, the fruit will be holy. 
So in the fourth year, we saw food coming out of our keepers awakening. And I said, yes, Lord, we will celebrate that anniversary. And some of you were with us in Changi Cove. We consecrated the entire year to the Lord. We went on to the fifth uh, year and the next verse in verse 25 was the verse that said, in the fifth year, you can now enjoy the increase. So we laid hold of that word and we say, okay, Lord, we are going to believe for increase that's going to come. But after five years, when I first started Archipus Awakening, I knew that I was dedicating my next decade to the Lord. Now, five years, that was the fifth year. We said, Lord, what do we do now for the next five years? So we brought everyone together and we conducted this exercise called Vision 2024 because that's our next marker to say, how do we move towards and across the next five years? Lord, what would you have us do? We believe that there will be increase. We have no idea how it's going to happen, but you need to show us. So that year, we continue to plow, we continue to sow, we continue to see the fruit and see things begin and continue to happen. When it came to the sixth year, the Lord gave me Isaiah 54 verse 2 to say, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of the tent. So the sixth word was stretch. And boy, did the Lord stretch us that year. And we did a prophetic act on the 11th of January, which we call 11-1, and we call that function uh, Hallelujah. Now, if you look at this picture, the Lord gave a, uh, uh, an idea for us to bring the towels together, pin it all together, and everyone had a part to stretch out the curtains of the tent. And I was believing the Lord for this word. Lord, you said to in, that we will increase. Lord, you said that you will enlarge. Now, we need to stretch out. Now, God's going to do the enlargement, but we have a part to play to stretch things out. Now, we were all ready for that. That was January 2020, and we were all excited, postured for that increase and that enlargement, and COVID-19 hit. Suddenly, everything came to a standstill. <laughs> everything was shut down. Everyone was locked down. And everybody had to go into back to their homes. Churches were shut. And every activity came to a standstill. I was crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, what happened to this increase? What happened to this stretch? And what happened to all these things? And the Lord reminded me, you are disrupted, but you cannot be distracted. Uh, is the assignment still valid? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, then move on your assignment. Isn't Archipus Awakening all about moving on assignments? So you may be distracted, but you cannot be, uh, you may be disrupted, but you cannot be distracted. And so we prayed through and we continued to learn the technology and get onto Zoom and started to do some live sessions and videos and all. But when it came to our seventh year, this was what the Lord said to us, nations, nations. Because during the sixth year, uh, when we were going through the circuit breakers, nations closed their borders, but God opened doors. And in the seventh year, last year until this year, the word was nations. I was going through the whole book of Psalms. And in September, I was reading Psalm 2 verse 8. And it said, they ask of me and I will give you the nations. I know this was talking about Jesus inheriting and ruling over all nations. But in one of our prayer sessions, Sister Grace said, I see the Lord holding up his scepter. In other words, you ask what you need to ask and he, by his grace, will grant it. And immediately I picked up my courage and I said, I read this first. I'm going to ask for nations, Lord. And the whole team was so excited because there was an alignment in their hearts to see the nations awaken, aligned, and assigned. And so in the seventh year, when we did our awakening events, the nations zoomed in. When we did our AWE, the alignment weekend, the nations zoomed in and we started to have dialogues with the different nations and the different regions. You see, every year, the Lord has given one word to direct us. Every year, we will have a focus 
to hold on to that word. If you have read the alignment checkbook, I will tell you that personal word is so important because there are days where you want to cry. There are days that are difficult. There are days where you don't even know whether anything is happening. You go back to that word. You align with that personal word and the Lord gives strength once again. And so seven years, look at these seven words in front of you. They are not they are not isolated words for just one time a year and that's it. No, it's compounded over and over again. They're still relevant. But after seven years, what's next? Right, Lord, what's the next word as we cross into the eighth year? How can we build on these seven words that you have already given to us? Is there something else? On the 28th of July, sometime last month, I was preparing for this event and as usual, I will go to the Lord and say, Lord, is there something you want to say to me and to us? And you don't have to say anything. I've got seven words already. I think I, 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 I have not outlived them. We have not fulfilled everything down there. It's still very, very relevant from sowing, raining, budding, fruiting, increasing, stretching in the nations. I've got my work cut out for me. If you don't say anything, thank you very much. I'll be happy. But will you say something to me so that we know how to encourage one another that we can then continue to move on. And the moment I uttered that prayer that morning, one word came very strongly and resounded in my heart. And that word was beyond. The word was beyond. And I can only think of Ephesians chapter 3, 20, 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. I said, Lord, I, I recognize this word. I agree with this word. The truth is, Archippus' awakening has always been beyond me. Archippus' awakening has always been beyond this guy, this little guy down here. From day one, I already told you, Lord, I cannot do this. I'm not able to do this. You're just reminding me, and I agree with you, Lord. But somehow, I felt the Lord was actually saying a little bit more to us to guide us. And as I studied this word, I realized that there can be three applications for this word beyond. It can be beyond a certain degree, or it can be beyond a certain space, as well as a certain time. So I, I want to share these next few points with you. I'm not saying that I, I've got it all written down and it's, it's come out clearly, but these are impressions as I meditate upon this one word. And I am being very vulnerable with all of you this evening, because I want to say it, because I want you also to judge this word and guide me. Uh, and if it's of the Lord, will you hold me accountable? And will you hold each other accountable? This is the purpose for me sharing these words and the next few points with you. The first beyond is that, that Every stream, team archivists, listen up, okay? Everything and every person that you are involved in any one of these streams, God is going to take us beyond every part of this. He's going to stretch you beyond your limits. He's going to push you and pull you for the glory of his kingdom. He's going to show us our misalignment so that we can align once more. I want you to get ready for something that is beyond our wildest imagination. If you think the last seven years has been challenging, you ain't seen nothing yet. But our Lord is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. So you get ready, right? The next beyond, as I look at this, the Lord has already reminded us that it is beyond COVID-19. He wants us to see and look beyond COVID-19. Now, I'm not bothered about this virus, let me say this. But he's reminding us to look beyond the crisis. Don't be distracted. Look beyond the season. Discern what is happening. We have to understand and look beyond what is in the natural because he's showing us that the spiritual battle is going to intensify. I've shared with the team before that halfway while we're praying through uh, for during the time of COVID-19 and seeking the things of the kingdom, the Lord has already showed that there will be a clash of kingdoms. And look at this month, August, things are going crazy around the world and things are intensifying. My fellow soldiers, you've got to get ready. 
God's going to take us beyond an understanding of what COVID-19 is. It's not even whether you are vaccinated or not vaccinated. It's not even whether you take Pfizer or is it Sinovac. That's be, we are beyond all these things, guys. Okay, I mean, do your due diligence, be responsible, but the Lord is challenging us. He's going to take us beyond this understanding. We've got to look into the spiritual because the next years will require us to do that. The next beyond is that he's, the Lord will be pu pushing and bringing our keepers beyond church. And this is a space thing. It's beyond the space of church. Now, for the first six to seven years, We've been invited by churches, pastors, and leaders. I'm so thankful for that because I've got friends here who have opened their doors into their congregations for me to share this word. And the Lord will continue to open these doors. But you know what? This is what the Lord has said. Those who are training seasons for you. Because in the church, it's a safe place. But as Pastor Amos has said, he is pushing AA beyond the church walls. He's bringing us into the marketplace is pushing us into new areas of operation. And we have to help people not just say amen to awaken, align, the sign, but to really bring kingdom impact and influence. The past seven years has prepared us for this. And I suspect, I suspect that the Lord wants our keepers awakening to experience beyond the level we understand what ecclesia is. I didn't say church. I say ecclesia. This is the kingdom community. So many of us, our minds are still stuck within the church walls. Whenever we say church, we still think about what to do within the walls of the church. The Lord wants to bring ecclesia. He wants to bring us beyond what we understand as organized and institutional church to truly know what kingdom community is. The next beyond is beyond Singapore. This is geographic beyond. The Lord has brought us already into nations. And on the 28th of October, uh, this uh, uh, last, last year, as I was praying through uh, deciding how are we going to set up, you know, overseas uh, representation, the word echo, A-A-K-O, came into my mind. And it stands for Archippus Awakening Kingdom Outposts. On the 20th of October, friends, there cannot be a better date because the 28th of October, 2020, is the first day of the eighth year of Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. After receiving it for seven years, in the eighth year, he shows me echo, kingdom outpost of Archippus Awakening. Sounds like the word echo because all we are is a message to be declared. And these echo stations will resound this wake-up call to the regions as well as to the nations. And this whole initiative, we call it Ops Econ, Echo Relational Network. And today, I'm so thankful that the Lord has brought uh, brothers and sisters from the different nations. You've heard from JUCO, and we're starting our training with Team Uganda, Echo Uganda. Soon, we'll be starting our training uh, with Echo Philippines, and then with Echo India, as well as Echo Nepal, and there are others that we are talking to, Echo Malaysia, Echo Dubai, and who knows, possibly, you know, into Indonesia and Hong Kong, into China, into Taiwan, I, I don't know, you know, but the Lord is opening the doors for all of us, and I, let, let me just share this little, little uh, a thought with you. One morning, I woke up, and I started to ask this question, Lord, what are the conditions to echo? You know, in the, really, you know, in the physical, in the natural, what are the conditions that must, uh, that, that must exist before an echo can take place? I don't know why it popped in my mind. I googled it and I found that one line and it says that the distance between the sound source and the reflecting surface must be more than 17 meters. The, words, the number 17 jumped out at me. It has to be beyond 17 meters. And do you know, do you believe in divine coincidences? Let me just share this fun fact with you. That last year in our mentoring aligning process, we had four overseas mappers. Our next map, 5.0, we have 17 overseas mappers. 
It just had to be 417, just for fun, right? Colossians 417. The 3rd of August was is our actual seventh anniversary. Today is the 20th of August. I don't know why we picked this date. I think for convenience and all. Yesterday, I got a shock of my life. 20 is 17 days from the 3rd of August, and I'm sharing this with you. I stepped out into full-time ministry, and that year, I turned 40 years old. Next year, I, uh, next year, next month, next week, I turn 57. It's 17 years since I stepped into the work of the full-time ministry. And now in Archippus Awakening, the Lord is opening doors into the nations. I mean, these are just divine coincidences, right? I'm not saying thus says the Lord. But the Lord encourages me in these small little ways. And this slide that we've been on for a while right now, just this afternoon, I looked at the slide number. It is 18. It is beyond 17, okay? Just for fun. So the Lord is taking us beyond and he's encouraging us and we're moving out from Singapore. The next beyond is this. Get a load of this. It's going to be beyond 2024. Ah, okay, it's going to be beyond 2024. Remember my 10-year commitment to the Lord? I said, Lord, I'm going to run this Archippus Awakening for you 10 years, oh Lord, and you tell me what to do on and when we come to 2024, I was praying and I asked this question. He said that when the word beyond came, immediately in my heart was very clear. The message of Archippus Awakening will go beyond 2024. Hear this. The message will go beyond 2024. Why? Because the message will remain very relevant. In fact, it will become even more urgent as the years go by. Now take note. Take note, note how I phrased it. I didn't say that the ministry will go beyond 2024. I said that the message will go beyond 2024. If the Lord desires that our keepers waiting will continue beyond 2024, praise the Lord. But whether we're here or not, we believe that this message will continue to resound way into, you know, past beyond 2024. God is not dependent on any ministry. And we hold the name of Archippus Awakening loosely because the message is relevant. It's not about the ministry. At the same time, it's also not about the man. It's not about me also. God can do anything abundantly with anyone else that he wants. And the final beyond is that it's going to be beyond one man. It's going to be beyond one man. And we've already seen this happen over the past seven years. This year in Singapore, when we did our 40-day prayer and fast, on the 29th of July of the 40-day booklet, I was very touched and impacted by this um, account of Ezra. And the devotional actually described Ezra disappearing. Suddenly, he's sort of, um, he, he's gone. You know, he's he just, uh, uh, you don't see him anymore. And it was said that he's still there, except that he was willing to disappear so that others can continue on their assignment. And that spoke very, very deeply into my heart. And I felt the Lord saying to me, for the next three years, this is what you have to focus on doing. Instead of leading from the front, you have to learn how to coach from the side. Our keepers awakening may have started with one man, running around like a mad horse, 2.4 kilometers every now and then. But it, is going, it has gone beyond one man. And the next three years, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to coach as much as I can from the side because my focus is to raise as many archipuses as, as possible from the ground up, moving and fulfilling their kingdom assignments. And in Archippian terminology, it's called to build the ark. To build the ark. And this is where I'm looking at all of you. I invite you to partner me. I invite you to partner all of us in Team Archippus. Because you know it is not one man. And God is reminding us he's going to move this and he's already done it beyond this one guy. And if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 to 18, it's a, it's, I could preach from this. 
but there's so many principles that we can glean very simply. Number one, don't compare anything with anyone else. Number two, don't commend yourselves because self-praise is no praise at all. Number three, don't cross into another person's AO or area of operation. Number four, don't crave another person's assignments. But what God has given to us as our keepers awakening, so within the limits and God will cause us to grow beyond the limits. And this is exciting, right? We stay within our limits, do the very best we can. But as the archipuses grow, we will grow beyond those limits that we were first limited by. You see, this is kingdom talk, right? It's very upside down. Stay within, but grow beyond. And that's what the Lord is saying. Come together, build the up, an assembly of archipuses, awaken, align, and assign. And so... You know, this seventh anniversary celebration, we give thanks to the Lord for this. But I'm looking beyond already. We, do you realize we've already entered into the eighth year? And I say to you, will you work with us? Will you partner us? If you sense the Lord saying to you, pioneer a new area of operation somewhere, come and talk to us. We will help you. We will train you. We will walk with you. We will cheer you on. If you feel you want to equip or establish an echo station in another region, in another country, come and talk to us. Get to know us. Let us get to know you because we must move only with kingdom relationship. We are not franchising McDonald's. <laughs> we are building kingdom headquarters and stations all over the place. If you want to sow into the work of our Keepers Awakening, there are ways to do that. But above all, will you pray for us? Right? If nothing else, just pray for us. And this is one word, beyond, beyond. Beyond, and we're going to hold this. If God gives us no other word, we hang on to the seven plus this one word for the days ahead. And so, I'll keep us awakening. The message will continue beyond me. It's always been beyond my reach, beyond my wildest imagination. Seven years, we're crossed into the eighth year. Now, what lies beyond? Only, only God knows. And so I just want to say again, thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for cheering me on. Thank you, my fellow soldiers, for putting up with my nonsense and my misalignments. I thank God that we have learned to submit to a higher kingdom cause so that we can then submit to one another that at the end, Jesus will get all the glory. And as I bring this as a, to a close, we want to say thank you, Jesus. We want to give glory to the Lord because... The Bible says, if we're going to glory, we're going to boast. Let's boast in the Lord. And so we give him all praise and we give him all glory.